So when I look at those statistics, I feel very hopeful about democracy and what the future looks like. And I don't know what role I will necessarily play in it. But when you're walking around Western Massachusetts and you're in Big Y and someone says, I voted for you, you feel a sense of responsibility to that person to, um, to carry on what you started in some capacity. Yeah. Um, so when I look around the students, and then if you look around the community that we're in Springfield, I think the one thing that they sort of have in common is that they're both sort of low turnout voters, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder, sort of two parts, when you spoke to voters, what did you hear about why did people tell you that they wouldn't be able to vote? Mm -hmm. And then you probably had a lot of people who overcame that and voted for the first time. Oh, they got did. involved for the first time. Yes, they did. And so what was it that you did that got them over that moment? I'll tell you, uh, this is true, and Kevin and Camille, if you, because you guys were out on the doors too, and you, I'm sure you have stories that are different than mine, because they would tell you things that they would not tell me as a candidate. And they would tell me things they wouldn't tell other people. So um, for, for some voters, the reason they didn't vote is because they didn't feel like it mattered. Like they would tell you straight out, my vote does not matter, these people do not work for me. When my sisters or my nieces or nephews or other people and our family would canvas and they would see that I looked the way that I looked, and particularly in what communities we were in, then they'd say, but for her, I will. So representation matters. And, and again, representation could take the form in it, any form. If it could, it, I don't care if you were black, I don't care if you were Hispanic, I don't care if you were white. For some people, just seeing that I look different than a typical politician animated them towards turning out a vote. It was true. I felt to them different than the status quo. Um, and that, I think, helps to explain the 3 to 6% turnout, particularly in the lower uh, turnout communities in Springfield, was that we made door-to-door, -door, heart to heart contact with the voters. Um, what else? What did you all hear from people who just were like, either I'm not voting or yes, I, I will vote now? Go ahead. Well, I had, and I talked to you about it, I had a situation, but it wasn't a situation, but um, a 90 year old woman, um, white woman, I went to her door you know, the city of Lockwood Town. She said, oh my God, please commit. <laughs> please commit. And I was like, I was taking the back left as a friend. I was like, I don't know what the hell was going to happen. But I sat down and I spoke with this woman for like over a half an hour. And she was just asking me questions. And she was just so energized. And she was looking for something different. And she says, you know, you convinced me. I am going to vote for this woman. And it took some time. But I was there for like half an hour and 45 minutes. And it was on a summer day, August, <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> yeah. But it was energizing. And she, I think, fed off my energy yeah. um, that I had for the campaign. But it was, a, it, was a, it was great. 90 years old, I was like, oh, wow, she was sharp yeah. as a tick. And she asked some good questions. I think the average age for the voters, when we looked at the numbers, <laughs> Saturday we had a call and we looked at the numbers. The average age was 65. The average age was 65. And part of that is because you're looking at super voters who have a history of turning out to vote because that's who the coveted voter is. Uh, we had to young people too. Yeah, we, oh, we certainly did. And I'm sure that's the three to six percent who ordinarily would not have voted. We certainly energized young people. And um, it's, 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 it's a challenge because you have this known quantity, and that is the super voter, and you do put your time into educating them and trying to inspire them to vote for you. But you have this lesser known, but more populated quantity, and that is the non-traditional voter. And so we were trying to do both, and I credit even the 30% that we got by activating awaiting the non-traditional voter, the young voter, the voter of color, the mom who's trying to get the kid to preschool while getting home from work. Like those are the ones 
that we put the most time and energy into also. Again, in a nurturing sort of way. Because it's, it's, it's deeper than just saying, go, just go vote. Some people didn't know where they were supposed to vote. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't know if they were registered properly. People move a lot, particularly in inner right. cities. And if you're moving and you forgot that you didn't change your registration 18 months later, you're driving all over the place trying to get so really, why do you do that if you feel like the system doesn't serve you? Mm -hmm. Right? So it's a lot of work. I wanted to say about um, when I was down there, especially her being in the area and people being able to connect to her, but a lot of guidance was needed as far as they knew that they should vote, but asking some of the particulars of where to vote, um, some of the issues that we brought up so they could understand the issues, and directing them directly, giving them direct links to look up different things, whether you're registered or not, really matter in this, in this area. Um, like she stated before, um, having the education around, well, you moved from the last time that you voted. So now you have to change your address. So just giving them direct guidance on registration and also letting, letting them know that she's available. Um, she came to community events, like she stated, um, of course there's a strategic plan to get the most votes as possible. But at the same time, trying to register those who don't normally register. So she would show up um, different days. She had like four or five or six places to be but she would show up locally at different events. So she was visible, and then even if she had to go, her campaign was there, we were there, um, to raise up the honor and significance of voting. So having direct access to information to vote um, was very important, and feeling connected really mattered. Yeah, you're right about that. You're, you're totally right. We, had, we met a voter the day of the election and she was in front of a polling place. I don't know, maybe she was picking up her kids. And my younger brother, well, he's, he goes to Westfield State too. He was like saying to her, just vote, it's my sister. He was holding a sign. Vote, it's my sister. She didn't care really about the policy. He didn't care to explain it to her. But she said, I just went in there and they told me that I can't vote, that that's not where I'm supposed to vote because I moved. And she was fussing and she was agitated. She had to go pick up her kids and her boyfriend was waiting for her. And she said, why is it that I'm a Springfield resident, but I can't go into any, I can, why can't I go into any voting place and just cast my ballot? And I was like, you're right about that. But do you want to ride? Because you jumped in my car and I'll take you to my color phone. And we'll get back to this topic later. <laughs> but it was a real thing. And again, that could have been one fewer vote that we would have gotten because, again, she didn't have a car and she had to go across town. It's stuff like that. And they don't know when they wake up and they decide they're going to vote happens when they can't get a parking spot. It's real. It's real. One of the things I felt that I was building relationships with the voters. I mean, I sat down, we spent a lot of time talking to them and building relationships. So I wasn't just her candidate who was going out there just, but I sat down and talked with them and building relationships is a big difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's true. I, I agree. And, 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 and similar to what your question was about uh, how do we build community and how we make demands, it is about good relationships. And I don't know about you all, but I, I just think that we just don't live in a society where relationship building is valued. I don't feel like I really know my neighbors. I don't always feel like I'm a part of whatever is happening. And I had to overcome that and be intentional about building a community and being vulnerable and, and welcoming and committed to being there for others, whether that's in school, whether that's in work, whether it's with my clientele, whether it's with my colleagues in the court, building community and feeling like you're a part of something matters. And running this campaign also helped us to do that in ways that I don't think I anticipated um, it happening that way. I just wanna speak specifically to the students here because I know we're doing a lot more time on the left here. One to definitely thank Zero for your inspired message, not to preempt 